Hello guys and gals, and welcome to, um, range. What is range? How does it work? Um, you know, in this game, range can sometimes be a little bit confusing, and you might not know necessarily how far something goes. Maybe you've just gotten your fancy infinity uh, on a uh, very nice pole arm for your mercenary, and infinity has a range of 13.3 yards, but how far is 13.3 yards, right? Um, well, that's kind of the whole issue. We don't really know. Um, you you kind of just don't really know exactly how big anything is. And, uh, and on the screen here, I have kind of a visual representation of um, an older version of the game, but still a, a good one nonetheless, uh, which goes over with you kind of how this specifically works. So, like, what is the specific range for a, uh, a very specific skill? Uh, zoom in on a little bit here. Um, as you can see here, we have um, Iron Maiden, which is right here. This is the red circle. That's uh, rather small. Uh, Decrepify as well is also rather small. Terror is absolutely tiny. Um, and then we have Redemption, which is out here on the 10-yard uh, radius. So everything within 10 yards gets sucked up by Redemption. Um, we also have the Corpse Explosion ability, as you can see. And Corpse Explosion uh, right now is currently at 14, which is about right where um, Infinity actually uh, dies away. Now, the interesting thing about range is that, well, some items go really, really far, and some items don't go very far at all. If you've ever used Decrepify before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I think the easiest way to look at ranges is to look at curses. All right, so here we are on a Necromancer. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by playing around with these curses. So I'm going to reset my character real quick, um, back to level 1, and we're going to take a look at these curses at their various uh, ranges, and uh, we're going to get an idea of what kind of what kind of, uh, of, of ranges we're talking about here. So what does it mean when something is, you know, 10 yards? Or what does it mean when something is 20 yards? Um, well, let's find out, shall we? So I've got my little, uh, my little necromancer here. And uh, we're going to stand out here in the open. And uh, let, me, uh, let me just murder some of these guys real quick with my powerful punches. You guys stand no chance against me, okay? Don't you. Forget about me. Punch, 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 punch you. All right, so here we have our necromancer um, in the center. And uh, you know what? Let's see if we can we can do something interesting here. I'm going to see if I can, like, bring this up. So here's our, uh, here's our, our indicator of the, the past, right? So this is, this is how it used to be a long time ago. And uh, let me make sure this is fit to the screen properly. Never wants to do what I wanted to do. There we go. Fit to the screen. And then uh, I should also be able to uh, make it slightly transparent, which uh, can also be fun. There we go. So now we're slightly transparent, and notice we are now in the center of the uh, of the doodank of the doojank, right? So this is the center. Um, let's go ahead and play around with some of these curses and see what kind of ranges we've got. So lower resistance is uh, 5.3 yards, and we're going to cast it directly on top of ourselves. You're going to see 5.3 yards is pretty crummy, very very crummy indeed. Uh, we also have uh, decrepify, which is uh, 4.6 yards, even smaller. Very, very tiny little curse radius. Uh, we also have Attract, a little bit larger at uh, 6 yards, but as you can see, not too big of a, of a difference. Um, I'm going to put some points in energy so I can spam curses to my heart's delight. We've got 3.3 .3 yards on Life Tap. Very, very, very small, as you can see. It barely even takes up any radius whatsoever. Um, and then we have things like uh, Confuse, we've got Dim Vision. Obviously, all of these have pretty crappy radiuses uh, to begin with. Now, as you level them up, they will go up in radius. So, for instance, we could bring Amplify Damage very quickly up to a uh, radius of 10 yards. So let's take a look and see what Amplify Damage looks like at 10 yards. 
as you can see, 10 yards corresponds pretty well with the uh, with the, the map here. Um, and as you can see, 10 yards is a pretty large zone. But we can go further. So let's bring it up to 13.3 uh, yards. So this is the exact radius of conviction. So if you're running an infinity mark, this is the exact radius of your conviction. Uh, so keep this in mind when you think about how far your conviction aura is going to go. Um, and if you look on the on the image, it actually corresponds pretty well with the image's 12-yard uh, marker. So it's about it's about accurate. Um, then we can go into things like um, we can go even further. So let's let's take amplified damage ups to its its maximum. Let's even grab some uh, some skill equipment here. And at level 25, we're looking at 18 yards. So 18 yards should cover practically the entire screen, right? Because our little thing here only goes to uh, what what uh, 15 yards. So uh, so 18 yards is going to be bigger than the entire screen. So we've got a pretty nice size here for, for our curses. Um, let's take a look at some of these other ones. Uh, let's look at Decrepify. So Decrepify is four yards. Oh look, at level 25, it's still four yards. So Decrepify has a really poor radius no matter what level it is. It's very sad. Uh, let's take a look at Weekend. Uh, Weekend goes to 22 yards, uh, pretty much a little bit bigger than Amplify Damage's 18 yards. So let's take a look at that, shall we? So Weekend's 22 yards, as you can see, literally covers the entire screen just about. So at 22 yards, we're already practically covering the entire screen um, with relatively no problem, right? So we're we're good. And um, let's go even further. Let's uh, let's take a look at some of these other abilities. So let's take a look at Iron Maiden. How high does Iron Maiden go? It does not level up. So it's very interesting that Iron Maiden goes nowhere. Uh, Life Tap. Life Tap goes up to 18.6 yards. So there we go. We've got a nice 18.6 yards from this. So what you can surmise by this is that when you are looking at stuff like this, um, what you are looking at is you're looking at a radius that does in fact increase and what is the radius at which you you know you're you're satisfied with it uh, because the curses they come up pretty high I mean we've got dim vision is 18.6 yards and as you can see that's already pretty much the entire screen only the corners really um, confuse is literally 20 yards which literally covers the entire screen um, but there are abilities in the game that go even further than this Right, so um, I've seen abilities that go upwards of like 40 or even 50 yards away, and these abilities literally will cover multiple screens. If 22 yards or 20 yards is covering the entire screen, then you have to imagine that 40 yards is going to cover multiple screens away. So you're going to be going like halfway into the next screen on the right halfway into the next screen above you, halfway into the next screen below you, and halfway into the next screen to the left of you, and you're literally going to be covering a huge swath of area. Now, what abilities could potentially do things like this? What abilities can go so far? Well, uh, let's take Holy Fire, for instance. So if you were a Holy Fire Paladin, um, Holy Fire at an extremely high level actually goes, like, ridiculously far. And uh, to give you an idea, I'm going to go to Amazon Basin and read you off the numbers. So at level 50, Holy Fire is 36 and two-thirds of a yard. 36 and two-thirds. If 20 yards is already covering the entire screen, as you can imagine, Holy Fire is literally hitting everything. Everything nearby you, even stuff that is off the screen, will be dying from the, the fire procs. Um... Now, range is not only li limited to spells um, and, and curses. Now, there are other things that you can visually see the distance on. Like, for instance, if you go to a, uh, let's say, a barbarian, and you go out into the wilds and you take a look at your, your range indicator, um, you can very clearly see the range on things like war cries. So uh, so let's do a quick little little pump here and let's take a look at some of these war cries. Now recently the war cries actually got their uh, radius actually added to the tooltip. 
And uh, as far as I know, all the radiuses of just about all of them are static, I think with the exception of Howl. Um, so when you utilize them, like for instance, Warcry, as you can see, it's not very far. It's only 4.6 yards, so it's very similar to the small curses on the Necromancer. Uh, we also have the uh, Battle Orders, which goes a lot further. As you can see, Battle Orders is 12.6 yards, which is about the same distance as uh, Conviction Aura, right? Conviction Aura is 13.3, which means this is only slightly smaller than the Conviction Aura. Uh, we also have the Battle Cry, which is much, much smaller. As you can see, it's only 3.3 yards. It's about the same radius as Decrepify. Uh, we also have uh, Shout, which has the same radius as the uh, Battle Commands. And then we've got things like uh, Howl, which have literally the most ridiculous radius ever at, um, what is it? When it maxes out, I'm, I'm pretty sure it has like 18.6 yards. Yeah, it's, it's kind of nuts. So that's bigger than the Conviction Aura um, by quite a bit. And as you can see, um, as long as they're within range, you can uh, you can tag them with it. Uh, let's see if we can find a monster that's just barely in range, just for the lulls, and uh, we'll play with it. As you can see, it, that one is just outside the radius, but he walked inside the radius, which uh, which helped me out. And uh, Hal makes things, Hal makes monsters run really far for a long time. Um, now, not only are we talking about spells, not only are we talking about cries, um, we are also talking about weapons. Now, this is another important one, and let me see if I can pull this one up um, so that we can get a better idea of the weapons. I'm pretty sure that I downloaded a weapons one. Uh, I did not. I did not. Hmm. I did download the Neolithic Corpse Explosion one, though. That was kind of that's kind of an interesting one. So this is a, a graphic of Neolithic's Corpse Explosion. And um, basically what it does is it shows you the distance of Neolithic Corpse Explosion in normal nightmare and uh, hell difficulty uh, based on the, dis like the center of his platform. So as you can see here in normal difficulty, um, it covers most of the platform. In uh, nightmare difficulty, it covers even more of the platform. And in hell difficulty, it covers the entire platform. So if Neolithic is corpse exploding a corpse, which is in the center of the platform, then that means that everything on the platform will be hit. So keep that in mind. Um, now, another thing we've got to go over is the range adder on weapons. Um, so before we go through the process of taking a look at this, let's go and actually look at our, our, our character actually fighting a monster with his fists. So zero range is a fist punch. So for your character to be close enough to hit a target with his fist, that is considered zero range. Um, and then anything that is added to this is a distance greater than zero range. So the way the game uh, looks at it is it talks about it as range plus the size of your weapon, essentially. Um, and the fists are essentially the smallest weapon or the the, the uh, least range possible. Uh, let's go over to Amazon Basin real quick and let's take a look at what Amazon Basin has to say because I think they've got a pretty good resource on this. And uh, let me move myself out of the way. Um, so up here you see it says uh, range equals range adder plus size. Okay. So uh, melee range of players varies according to the range adder of the weapon, equipped, and the size of the monster being attacked. Um, so we have here, we've got equipping these weapons will not increase your range compared to attacking barehanded. Um, so basically every single one of these weapons is considered a zero range weapon with no, adding, no added range. Uh, so they are the same essentially as punching somebody with your fists. Um, these are actually pretty terrible as far as range goes, and um, I usually try to shy away from zero range weapons on melee characters uh, just simply because it makes it a lot more difficult to play your character with zero range weapons. Uh, we also have the range adder one, so these are items that have one extra range, 
added over the the uh, the immediate terribleness of the you know punching essentially um, and uh, and it's a pretty nice little list here as you can see phase blades are at least a plus one uh, at axes are plus one catechus is plus one a lot of really nice items in here are plus one the cryptic sword is a plus one um, ogre maul thresher as you can see thresher has pretty bad range for a pole arm it's uh, it's really low on the list um, then we also have range adder two so these are items that have two added to the range uh, most one-handed weapons do not fall into this category, but the Scourge and the Berserker's Axe are two of the nicest ranged one-handed melee weapons that you can possibly equip. Um, as you can see here, the Thunder Maul is in here, the Colossus Volge, um, a lot of interesting uh, weapons that are a range adder two. Now what this generally means, what I like to call it, is range three. Because of course zero or one is your first range. And then of course when you have your first added point to increase that range further, that is range two or, or range plus one. And then we have range three or range plus two. Um, and uh, that's why people love to use berserker's axes. Um, over the phase blade, even though the phase blade is faster, is because the phase blade is a shorter range weapon. And many, 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 many times the Berserker's Axe will outperform the phase blade just simply because it can attack monsters that are further away. Especially back in the old days where we'd have desync issues all the time, that extra range would come in really handy when you got desynced. Uh, we also have range adder three. Range adder threes are items that uh, are pretty far, but not quite the farthest. And as you can see here, we have the glorious axe, the cryptic axe, the Hyperion spear, and the Stygian spike. Um, all very nice items that you can put into the range adder three category. Now, a, a good um, segue into this is to tell you that mercenaries have a set range, and uh, the weapon that you put on them does not matter as far as range is concerned. Um, so like I, when I you look at the cryptic axe here, you see the cryptic axe is a range adder three, and you're like, okay, well that seems like it would be pretty nice, but mercenaries, especially act two mercenaries are stuck at range two. Um, they never go any higher than range two. So um, you can actually choose weapons that have a rather poor range, like a thresher, because the thresher will be forced to be a range two, despite the fact that it is a range adder one. Um, and then finally is our longest reaching weapons in the game. These are the ones that you can literally attack over top of the back of other people with. It's absolutely glorious. You can literally be standing behind someone in the maggot layer, probably two people back, and you can still hit the monster that they're hitting. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, and these items are the Great Poleaxe, the Giant Thresher, which is the reason why one of the Giant Thresher is so sought after because it is a very, very nice item with a very, very nice range. Uh, we also have the Man Catcher and the Ghost Spear, which have seen a lot of really nice um, uh, comeuppance lately, since you can now make the Breath of the Dying, uh, the Obedience, uh, Pride, and... Um, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the other name. The Fire One! No, I already said Obedience, didn't I? Uh, infinity uh, in those. Um, it's a very interesting choice now, especially since the Man Catcher is one of the fastest items that you can possibly put uh, a rune word into. And uh, and I believe now the Man Catcher, the four socket ethereal Man Catcher, is the best Merc weapon. And uh, the Man Catcher five socket actually makes a really nice obedience for spears on. And the Ghost Spear is a very, very nice Breath of the Dying base for a spears on all very very nice and of course the war pike is also very very far uh, a long range as well and i think you will find that if you play around with ranged items like for instance any of these items that have a range of four um, i think you will find that they are way better in terms of hitting targets and uh, continuing to hit targets that may be running away from you or feared or any other number of you know possible combinations and just in general i think uh, you will have fun with the longer ranged weapons um, especially when you compare something like the phase blade which is a very nice weapon mind you to the berserker's axe um, i have always enjoyed the berserker's axe more 
So, like, if I had a choice between, like, I don't know, like a Grief Phase Blade and a Breath of the Dying Berserker's Axe, I'm probably going to choose the Breath of the Dying Berserker's Axe just simply because I really, really enjoy the additional range and I can make up for the loss of speed. Um, the Scourge, on the other hand, is a little of an odd weapon. It does have really nice range, though. Not really sure what you'd put in it. Um, all in all, range is definitely something that has a grand effect on how your character um, functions. Uh, whether your character is able to cast the curses, whether you've got to spam the curses over and over again, um, whether or not you can hit a target that's right next to you or two feet away or three feet away. And um, you know what? Let's go to uh, really quickly, just to end this video, let's go take a look at my max range polearm girl uh, that I just created. Uh, her name is... I'm trying to remember here. Tankazon. She's my Tankazon. And uh, I'm going to take you over to my Tankazon and I want to show you the difference between a high range weapon and a relatively poor range weapon. Uh, just so you guys can get an idea of how far away you can be to uh, attack a monster. Uh, the the uh, she's using an ethereal breath of the dying ghost spear, uh, so she's she hits like a freaking Mack truck. Now, um, one of the things that I've always noticed is that when you desync, what happens is the monsters will kind of gather around you in a circle. Um, and it's very, very sad because what happens is, is you get stuck in a place where you're technically not. Um, and this spot that you're technically not is, um, is not allowing you to hit targets because they're not technically near you. Well, you don't have that problem with a range 4 weapon uh, because range 4 weapons can literally hit just about everything, no matter where they are. I mean, I could literally hit that monster over there, that monster over there. I didn't even have to move. Like, if you did this same thing on a paladin, he would have had to have chased down half of those targets. Uh, he would have had to have run to move to get to them. And this is also very powerful because as a character, um, if you guys have seen my video on running, uh, running causes your character to lose defense and capture block at 25%. There's a lot of bad things that come with running. And, um, and being able to stand still and hit everybody nearby is extremely powerful because I'm not running. I'm not losing my defense. I'm not losing those things that are important to my character. And, um, and that's why I feel like range is just a very important thing, especially for melee characters. Um, but it is also important for spellcasters as well. Um, you need to know how far away your ability works. You need to know how far the aura is on your Merc can travel. Um, you know, like, for instance, with Conviction, I ran into somebody while I was playing who was using Conviction on his Fist of the Heavens Paladin and didn't understand that he needed to be standing within range so the Conviction aura could actually hit the target <laughs> so that he was actually dishing out more lightning damage. Um, he was basically not ever getting close enough to uh, to properly dish out the damage that um, that he should have been doing because conviction was never on the target. It's, it's all very silly. Anyway, I hope this video has helped you out a little bit to understand how ranges work, how far away things are, um, giving you an idea on how you can figure it out as well for yourself because by using... Like, for instance, the Necromancer, I, I literally was able to show you multiple ranges, how far things go. Uh, the, using the Barbarian's Shouts, I showed you how they actually, you know, how what the distance was, how you could actually see whether or not it was working on the target. And, uh, and maybe now that you've seen this video, you've got a better idea of how far your aura goes or how far your... Uh, you know, your Nova goes or how far your, you know, whatever it is that you're looking at um, it gives you a better idea inkling of an idea, a better way to figure it out for yourself. And um, that's what really, really, really counts, right? That's why I'm, I'm here. I'm trying to teach you guys mechanics. That way you can figure it out for yourself. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and uh, keep watching.